Honorable President of India, my colleagues from Railways and Department of Post, the lucky probationers who have got the rare opportunity to meet Honorable President today. Sir, it is a great honor for all of us in the Ministry of Railways and Department of Post that Honorable President has been kind enough to spare time and consented to meet the probationers of two of the oldest departments delivering public services to the country for over 160 years. Sir, the origin of Indian Railways and India Post goes back to more than 160 years, but the Indian Railways and India Post we see today actually took shape after the independence. Since then, both the organizations have weathered many challenges of the changing times and made many strides. Both the organizations have a wide reach across the length and breadth of the country and their social footprint goes much beyond providing transportation and postal services. Sir, Indian Railways is one of the largest rail networks in the world. It ranks first amongst rail passenger carriers and the fourth largest freight carrier in the world. It integrates the vast and diverse country by connecting communities and linking industries to markets. In 1951, the railways network was slightly more than 53,000 route kilometers, of which 25,000 kilometers was broad gauge. Very little of it was in double line and triple lines. Our network size has increased from 53,000 kilometers to 66,000 kilometers, but the composition has undergone a sea change. We now have 58,000 kilometers of broad gauge, 20,000 kilometers of double and multiple lines, and 26,000 kilometers of electrification. Steam locomotives have given way to modern diesel and electric locomotives. Modern wagons and coaches have been inducted. Modern signaling has been installed. And because of these steps, Indian Railways is able to carry 15 times the traffic it used to carry in 1951 with appreciable improvement in productivity of assets and manpower. This has been possible by relentless hard work and dedication of our officers who work as a team 24 by 7. Probation period is the time when the young officers are introduced to the life of a teamwork. Indian Railway is a unique organization which has been able to get the best of specialization and coherence at all levels in the organization. National Academy of Indian Railways, formerly known as Railway Staff College, has done a great service to Indian Railways by providing vital trainings to young recruits. We also have six premier training institutes for various specific services, and there is a great deal of sharing so that learning in the probation period is truly multidisciplinary. Indian Railways has a dedicated workforce of 1.3 million employees, and this is managed by a cadre of around 10,000 Group A officers. Most of these officers are recruited into one of the 10 railway services through UPSC. Today we have, sir, 154 probationers from railway services dealing with accounts, personal, stores, and civil engineering recruited through UPSC in 2013 and 14. They shall be completing their 78 weeks training by June of this year. We also have 13 probationers from Indian Postal Service of 2016 batch. Sir, we are aware that competitive landscape in the country and the world at large is changing fast. The pace of change requires our offices and trainees in particular to imbibe the value of the speed and flexibility from the very beginning. 
we are laying a great amount of emphasis on instilling a sense of overall purpose and the organization goal to serve the country and give our customer the best services. I would like to thank Honorable President of India once again for his magnanimous gesture of meeting and blessings the probationers today. Thank you. Honorable President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee, Director and Faculty of Rafi Hamad Kidwi National Postal Academy, Chairman of the Railway Board, Faculty from the Railway Fraternity, other esteemed officers, and my fellow probationers from the Indian Postal Service and the various Indian Railway Services. Sir, it is indeed an honor and privilege for me to share with you our collective experience as trainee officers of the Indian Postal Service. Before that, let me express my deepest sense of gratitude to you for granting this audience to us. India Post is a central government department which has its reach even in the remotest corner of the country. The humble post office with its postal red buildings has always been affordable and accessible even to the most rural villager. Literary works of Ravindranath Tagore and R.K. Narayan portray the trust and affection for the post office and we hope we can continue to uphold the same trust. Sir, our journey as probationers began on 19 December 2016 at a time when India Post was in the media limelight due to the launch of India Post Payment Bank or IPPB. We were 13 probationers from eight different states having various educational background including engineering, law, medicine, dentistry, nursing, humanities, commerce and management. The first thing which we noticed on entering our academy, which we lovingly call Rakanapa, was a sign stating, you are entering a stress-free zone. Truly, a green campus with its peacocks and flower gardens has been a green oasis in the dusty hot city of Ghaziabad. And our faculty and fellow probationers have ensured that we have a family away from home. Personally, I feel it was destiny as after interviews, Two of our probationers had visited the Philat National Philatelic Museum in Dark Bhavan and had wondered what if we got postal service and we got postal service. Our day starts with yoga sessions and ends with sports and games activities. Our training program consists of classroom lectures and experiential learning. We also have shramdan, classes by industrial experts, French language classes, ethics classes, etc. Classes by postal service officers who have served in the army postal service and difficult terrains like Jammu and Kashmir and Northeast India have helped us appreciate the challenges faced and ways to overcome them. We have visited branch post offices in villages, head post offices, railway mail service offices, sorting offices, e-commerce parcel, logistics center, international air mail sorting center, etc. Such field visits have equipped us with ground level understanding of the working of post offices. For example, visit to the old Delhi RMS made us realize how thousands of newspapers and printed material are mailed every day at cheap rates as low as 25 paise. This indirectly helps subsidize the spread of knowledge and literacy. We also realize the universal service obligations of India Post in delivering services in the remotest corners like Ladakh, Lakshadweep, or Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The job training is an integral part of our learning and in the next phase, we will all be going to our field attachment at different parts of India. Our faculty lovingly call us three month old babies in the postal department. But in these three months, we have had the opportunity to travel far and wide. From the World War II era airbase and barracks, which hold the Postal Training Center Saharanpur, to the colorful state of Gujarat, which has the Postal Training Center Vadodara. From snow-capped mountains of Manali, to Rishikesh, Jaipur, and the sands of runs of Kutch. The exposure that we have gained through such diverse experience has enriched our knowledge and broadened our horizons. The various international training programs conducted our academy has given us a chance to interact with officials and postal administrators from across the world, enriching our learning. We have got a chance to be the cultural ambassadors of our country. Sir, we are entering postal service at a time of rapid change, IT modernization, 
and implementation of various projects like IPPB, delivery of passport services, core banking, core insurance, rural ICT with the use of handheld solar powered devices, automated mail processing units, e-commerce, logistics hub, etc. There will be a lot of challenge while we try to implement it. Our academy is equipping us not only to deal with the challenges in communication technology, but also to use it to provide faster and easier services to our customers. We are being trained to manage new technologies. Our training thus gives us a holistic view about the department, its potential, the challenges it faces, and the ways to overcome it. So today's meeting with you is the most memorable event of our training, which we will cherish throughout our life. I would like to conclude by remembering Gandhiji's talisman. Whenever you are in doubt or when the self becomes too much with you, recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man whom you may have seen and ask yourself if the step you are going to take will be of any use to him. Will he gain anything by it? Will it restore to him uh, to control over his own life or destiny? Then you will find your doubts and yourself melting away. I feel we are blessed to be in this sector which provides service to the common man. And we will always keep this talisman in mind. Thank you, sir. Jai Hind. Bharat ke Rashtrapati, Manani Shri Pranam Mukherjee, Manani Adhyaksh Railway Board, Evam Railway Board ke Anya Adhikari Gan, Adarni Maha Nirdeshak, Bharati Rail Rashtri Academy, Nirdeshak, Bharati Rail Civil Engineering Samstan, Nirdeshak, Rafi Ahmed Kidwai, Rashtri Dark Academy, Adarni Sankai ke Sadas, Rashtrapati Bhavan, के अधिकारी गण मेरे प्रिय साथी प्रशिक्षु अधिकारी गण सभी को मेरा प्रणाम महोदय आज हमारे लिए अतिशय गौरव का क्षण है कि हम भारतीय रेल सेवा के प्रशिक्षु अधिकारी तेरह महीनों के प्रशिक्षण के बाद आपके समक्ष में उपस्थित हैं हम भारतीय रेल के परिवर्तन का एक महत्वपूर्ण दौर में इस संगठन में प्रवेश कर रहे हैं और इसलिए हमारा प्रशिक्षण भारतीय रेल राष्ट्रीय एकेडमी और भारतीय रेल सिविल इंजीनियरिंग संस्थान में परिवर्तनकारी अनुभव रहा है महोदय हमारा प्रशिक्षण 28 दिसंबर 2015 वडोदरा में शुरू हुआ फाउंडेशन कोर्स में हमने भारतीय रेल के प्रतिभाशाली अधिकारियों से मुलाकात की जिन्होंने रेलवे के लिए उनके जुनून से हमें प्रेरित किया दो महीनों में हमने अंतर सेवा सौहार्द का विकास किया जो आज भी है महात्मा गांधी कहते थे कि अभ्यास अध्ययन से ज़्यादा मायने रखता है इसी के अनुरूप भारतीय रेल राष्ट्रीय एकेडमी के संकाय और रेलवे बोर्ड बदलती रेलवे की रूपरेखा को ध्यान में रखते हुए कक्षा के बाहर सावधानी पूर्वक प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम बनाई है किसी ने सही कहा कि अगर कोई भारत का कोच करना चाहता है तो उसे ट्रेन पर सफ़र करना चाहिए महोदय भारत के एक छोर से लेकर दूसरे छोर तक रेल विभाग के भिन्न भिन्न कार्यालयों के उच्च स्तरीय कर्मचारियों से हमारा परिचय कराया गया इस प्रशिक्षण के दौरान हमने भारत के अनेक रंग देखे भिन्न भिन्न प्रांतों की सभ्यता और संस्कृति को देखा और भारत की अविश्वसनीय प्राकृतिक सुंदरता देखना देखने का लाभ भी उठाया एक दो सप्ताह के क्षेत्रीय प्रशिक्षण के बाद जब वडोदरा वापस आए भारत रेल के विशाल संगठनात्मक संपत्ति का ज्ञान और मौजूदा कमियों का ज्ञान भी ग्रहण किया महोदय रेलवे हमारे देश का जीवन रेखा है यह समझने के लिए हमारा प्रशिक्षण पूर्वोत्तर राज्य और दूरस्थ स्थानों पर हुआ है इसके चलते हमें यह भी एहसास हुआ कि किसी प्रकार हम सब भारतीय भारतीयता के एक सूत्र में बंधे हैं प्रशिक्षण के अंतर्गत हमें विभिन्न राष्ट्रीय महत्व के संस्थानों और संगठनों में और विदेश में प्रशिक्षण भी दिया गया था जैसे कि आईआरपीएस को आईएम कोई कोड में आईआरएस को सेनेका कॉलेज टोरंटो में आईआरएसएस को नीति मुंबई में भारतीय रेल के सुधारों की तीव्र गति को ध्यान में रखते हुए यह प्रशिक्षण आवश्यक और महत्वपूर्ण है भारतीय रेल राष्ट्रीय एकेडमी और इन्हीं जगहों पर उत्कृष्ट खेल के बुनियादी ढांचे के बारे में विशेष उल्लेख किया जाना चाहिए जिसमें शारीरिक और मानसिक योग्यता को ध्यान में रखा गया महोदय 
रेल परिवार के साथ हमारी शिक्षण यात्रा बहुत ज्ञानवर्धक और सुखद थी महोदय आम लोगों की ज़िंदगी में सुधार लाने के लिए भारतीय रेल की असीम संभावनाओं को हमने समझा और महसूस किया हम आपको यह आश्वासन देते हैं कि हम ईमानदारी के साथ अधिकारियों के रूप में क्षमताओं के अनुसार राष्ट्र की सेवा करेंगे धन्यवाद जय हिंद Good afternoon, Sri Akhimital, Chairman Railway Board, members of the Railway Board, Pradeep Kumar Bishoy, Director Rohmiya Amit Kidwai National Postal Academy, distinguished faculty members of the Training Institutes, professionals, I welcome all of you to this historic Darbar Hall of Rashtrapati Bhavan. You have noticed the high dome, glazed columns, sandaliers, all these are mute witness of very momentous changes in our national life over the last seven, eight decades. Before that, when the capital was transferred from Calcutta to Delhi in 1911, and quite some time were taken to construct this building, which was the residence of the British Governor General and Viceroy. They made it a prestigious building because historically in this period, truly British power was number one in Navy and also in preserving their colonial interests. But as it happened, within a very short span of the occupation of this building as Vice-Regal Lodge, by the then Governor General and Vice Roy Lord Arwin in 1931. Within 16 years, they had to leave. And last British Governor General, who was the occupant of this building, was Lord Mountbatten. All these are part of history. You have read it, but here you will have the feeling of some sort of historic presence of mighty persons who shaped our history and dominated political scenario of this subcontinent for a very long period of time. I welcome you and I also congratulate the young professionals for joining the public service. You have various degrees. Some of you are highly technical personnel. You could have joined other services or professions. Some of you have passed through the very difficult 
competitive examination, which by all standard is one of the most difficult examination to recruit the civil servants or Indian civil service class one recruitment examination. I congratulate you on your academic excellence and also your professional qualifications which you have acquired and common point, both Indian postal services and railway services, the strong desire to serve the people of this country. I can assure you, you will not feel disappointed because when you actually start your work, you will find what tremendous responsibilities you are to carry on your young shoulders. In no other job, such young persons are entrusted with such heavy responsibilities. And as responsibility brings authority, power, associated with it to achieve success, it also entrusts on you sense of duty to serve the people. Dear professionals, as you are aware, both these services are very old. Railway services, Postal services. The two most service organizations our colonial masters introduced to serve these people and also to serve their own colonial interests because Britishers were essentially a mercantile nation and they wanted to expand trade and commerce. Therefore, the expansion and establishment of railway communications and also the communications through post offices were needed. It was a small beginning, but over the years we have huge infrastructures both in railways and in Indian postal services. I understand the number of post offices, which were just 23,344. Today we are having more than 150,000 post offices. The number of people served have also enhanced substantially area-wise, one post office served 21, point, 21 to 22 kilometers, square kilometers, and more than 8,000 persons. Similarly, the Indian Railways is one of the largest railway network in the world. We have 66,000 root kilometers, 10,000 locomotives, 68,000 passenger coaches, 2.5 lakh wagons, and 13,000 passenger trains. And you can calculate how many passengers in number in these trains are being carried by Indian Railway from one place to another place every day. It is a huge and gigantic responsibility. And I must say, both these organizations have served well. Even after independence, with their phenomenal expansions, and ever-increasing responsibilities. 
they face the challenges and serve the people of this country. Today also you are facing a serious challenge in both sectors. The rapid transformation caused by the technological changes. Usually, technology is disruptive. Whenever new technology comes, it causes disruption in the society. And it may happen, many a sections are affected adversely. Therefore, it would be your responsibility to adjust yourself with this disruption and to find out how best we can utilize the technology because you cannot go back. You will have to move forward, look much ahead, not to look back. Therefore, you will have to adjust with the technology. If the number of letters to be delivered by postmen are substantially reduced and it, are, it is replaced by email or the telegraph, which was at one point of time considered as the most effective service to the people to bring communication from the distant, is no longer in use. With the increase in mobile telephones, with the invention of internet, and truly transformational revolution in information technology has brought a sea change in the system. But I am quite confident our young friends, they will be able to face these challenges and will take advantage, benefit of the technological change and improve the service to the people. In the long history of railways, Though I did never have the privilege of serving the railway ministry as minister of my long two and a half decade ministerial careers, but I had to deal with. As finance minister, I had to deal with the railway budget. I had to make adequate provisions for the planning of railways and usually my colleagues, the railway minister was not very happy to me <laughs> because always I used to have a red pencil to cut the demand whatever he or she wanted. But nonetheless, but too longer, to, uh, tomorrow, it is not necessary because the railway budget which was introduced in India from 1924 is merged with the general budget. There was a demand for quite some time. The railway is virtually a department. And there were historic reasons why the separate budget was there in 1924, with very limited power of the Indian representatives to have control over money and finance of the government. And railways were run by the different companies. So it was necessary for them and it was relevant. But this year, when it was decided to have it, you have noticed how smooth transactions have taken place. And I must congratulate Parliament for adjusting itself with the changed situation. And for the first time, the entire budgetary exercises have been completed by 31st March 
and I compliment them. They have done exceedingly well to manage the financial administration of this country. And it was a problem. It was a problem because of many complexities. Earlier the budget was to be presented on the last working day of February. This year, and I do hope, it will be possible to make further changes. It is at the beginning of the February. This year it was presented on 1st February. Naturally, the members got adequate time because the earlier delay was the gap between the last day of the financial year and the first day of the presentation of budget was just 30, 31 days. And this year it has been possible to have almost two months. Therefore, it was easy for the relevant standing committee to scrutinize and also for the House to approve the budgetary proposals after the scrutiny of the relevant committees and open discussions on the floor of the House. I appreciate that. Similarly, railway is also to face technological challenges. Always there is a competition, fear of competition. Cheap airlines are coming. And there is a diversion of the passengers because it saves time. So on the one hand, challenges are to improve the speed of the railways. On the other hand, to achieve that, sometimes we talk of bullet trains. We want to have it as more advanced countries are having that. Experiments are going on. But to think in terms of whole India, from Kashmir to Cape Comorin, railway has its presence. And I am happy that it is going to have more presence in more difficult terrains, hilly, rocky mountains, and to move through tunnels, which are, we speak of the engineering excellence, for which the engineers have to play a very vital role. That does not mean that those who are coming in the other streams, including the accounts, they are to play the less important roles. Both are to play much more important role to serve the people of this country. I am glad that I got this opportunity to sharing some of my perceptions and ideas with you. Only one point to which I will draw your attention, particularly in the railways, that our systems are plagued with pilferage. And Indian railways are to improve that situation. They are improving. Substantial improvement has taken place but much more ought to be done. Because if we are to be competitive, I'm not talking of these particularly two sectors, postal and railway services, but in every service sector. There was a point when public sector had the dominance. Government controlled public sectors was the only service providers. Take the case of the airlines. Except Indian Airlines and Air India, there was no service. Today it is not the same. Similarly in railways, there may be private companies. I do not know, but always you should get ready yourselves to face the challenges. Postal Department is facing serious challenges today through the speed post, not only technological disruptions, but otherwise also the challenges are coming. So life is full of challenges and your job, young men and women, are to solve them with innovation, with new ideas, with ingenuity, and I wish you 
all success, the career which you are beginning in railways, in postal services, when you reach the top or at the higher echelon, you will find, I have no doubt, find immense satisfaction that you took the correct decisions to join the civil service at the beginning of your career. Thank you. Wish you all success. Jai Hind. Honorable President of India, Honorable Chairman Railway Board, Senior Officers from Indian Railways and India Post, Probationers from Indian Postal Service and different Indian Railway Services, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege and honor for all of us to have the august audience of the Honorable President of India today. Sir, before I formally propose the vote of thanks on behalf of both Indian Railways and India Post, I would just like to submit that both railways and post started operations in 1853 and 1854 respectively, although post offices were there earlier to that. And thereafter, the post office started using the railways to carry the mails. Since then, both the post and the railways has worked together to ensure not only the smooth conveyance of mails across the country, but also actually in bringing the whole nation together. Yes, sir, as you have rightly said, the Dependo Post is having the largest postal network in the whole world with almost 1,55,000 post offices. Along with railways, it has been the backbone of India's communication network for more than 160 years and has played a very crucial role in the socio-economic development of this country. India Post is now going through a period of profound change. It has ushered in many new initiatives to make it a strong, vibrant, and relevant organization in the society. In this era of economic liberalization, the post office is gearing itself to meet its social obligations like the social security benefit payments, the delivery of e-commerce products in the remotest places of the country. Sir, we have embarked upon the many post office transformation initiatives such as Project Arrow, the India Post IT Modernization Project, the Core Banking, the Automatic Mail Processing, the Mail Network Optimization Project, etc. The, uh, the, our IT modernization project is going to transform the post into a technology-enabled and self-reliant or organization. As part of this, we have already networked 28,260 post offices in a single wide area network connected to a data center. The core banking solution has already been rolled out in more than 23,000 post offices, and we have also established 976 interoperable ATMs throughout the country. The core insurance solution for our PLI services is functioning in more than 25,000 post offices. Sir, we are also digitizing all our 1,30,000 rural post offices by supplying them a handheld devices with the necessary accessories to improve the quality of service and achieve the financial inclusion of all our rural population. The e-post office has also enabled customers not only to purchase the philatelic stamps, but also pay their PLI premia online without visiting the post offices. Recently, we have set up the India Post Payment Bank as a 100% owned subsidiary of the Department of Post, and we plan to make all the branches operational throughout the country by the end of this year. We have also launched recently the Passport Seva Kendras in many of the post offices for the benefit of citizens living in the far-flung areas of the country. Sir, we are trying our best to live up to the words of our first Prime Minister, who said that among the many things, good or bad, that the modern world has produced, surely the postal system which con covers the whole world is one of its most beneficent activities. Yes, sir, we are imparting not only the knowledge and skill about the management of postal services to our professionals, but also the right attitude to serve our esteemed customers during their professional course at the academy. The academy is trying to equip the professionals with the understanding of the postal industry and empowers them to take on greater responsibilities, facilitate change and innovation, and ultimately drive performance. Yes, sir, training of all the new entrants to the public service is not complete without learning from the experiences of those who have excelled in public life. So this is why we feel privileged to get this opportunity to learn from your vast and varied experience. Sir, I assure you that your words of wisdom and advice today will certainly act as a constant source of inspiration for all of us to perform our duties with sincerity, honesty, integrity, and dedication. On behalf of both Indian Railways and India Post, I take this opportunity to thank you again for sparing your valuable time from your busy schedule and providing us this opportunity to be inspired by you. Jai Hind.